Alright, hello. So, recently I made a video covering the heroic striking interaction with your offense dual yield penalty in that it removes it, which impacts your gearing and could impact the way you play your warriors, right? In this video, I mentioned heroic strike queuing or heroic strike cancelling as a way to play, where you start um, queuing a heroic strike at the start of the main hand swing and then you end before you finish off the main hand swing in order to uh, not use the rage and always have heroic strike queued and make the most out of this dual wield penalty interaction, right? So so I mentioned this because it's sort of an option and you could technically do it and I just mentioned it because it's there but the thing is um, what I wanted or what I maybe should have emphasized at that point is that this sort of playstyle is not worth it 99% of the time for people to actually do. Um, the actual numerical gains from doing perfect heroic strike cancelings versus just letting heroic strikes go through naturally when you would anyway in your rotation is such slight it's such a slight increase that the potential risk of you missing a bloodthirst due to a heroic strike accidentally going off for some reason is so big that it's just not worth doing ever. Um, and I wanted to sort of make a video here going through why this is and sort of the numbers behind it because I see if people talking about heroic strike cancelling like it's some sort of huge thing whereas it's not actually the heroic strike cancelling playstyle that makes makes the heroic strike bug feature whatever a big deal. It's mostly just how it, it impacts gearing as a warrior and how it impacts our crit cap and stuff like that. Um, it's not something you should apply to your actual rotation. So... There are a couple of things that make this, so the, the risk is the big thing here, but it comes from a fact that with world buffs on in raid, which as a Fury Warrior, I would say you should always get as many world buffs as you can, which is DMT and Songflower and Oni Head. Not only does it help your raid, but it also makes the raid way more fun for you. Uh, Fury feels fan fucking tastic with world buffs on, and it's just great. And with all world buffs on and you know raid buffs and you have your consumables on, you can have so much raid regen anyway that you're gonna cast Heroic Strike so much of the time that your uptime. Um, is so high that it really diminishes the potential gains you would get from perfectly heroic strike cancelling uh, at all the points where you don't actually want it to go through, right? Uh, so it's just a lot of stuff stacked up against making this actually a worthwhile playstyle. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to make it so you don't have to take my entire word for it, even though if you look at logs from you know the, the good parses and whatnot, you'll probably find this backs up my stats here, my statements. Uh, but I made this little spreadsheet here. Um, which, so, I want to preface this by saying I made this pretty quickly, it's very sort of napkin math-y, but it is using correct formulas. Uh, it, there's just some parts of it I didn't really consider, like, I didn't actually calculate the rage again you would get from the offhand hits that would actually go, go through um, with heroic strike cancelling, um, which is, I think, the main part of this, which makes this a bit off, but it's just for general numbers. Um, the numbers aren't going to be exact, and uh, you know, let's just deal with that. This is just to get an idea of the type of that damage increase you might see from perfectly heroic shot cancelling every attack. Alright, so, um, basically, the reason why I need to do this, and we can't just look purely at logs, is if you look at Warcraft log file here, um, so while logs don't actually differentiate between main hand and off hand hits in the damage logs, other than, you know, the different damages, because if you see your melee hits here, it's all accumulated into one category, and if you look at the actual logs themselves, you'll find that they all are under the same melee hit name. So it's difficult to get an exact number of how many off hand hits you had during a fight, and we kind of need to estimate it off weapon speed so that's why i had to make the spreadsheet and sort of figure it out um but again you can you can pretty much figure this out on your own and probably find that it's fairly accurate but let's go through the spreadsheet here right um so i have some inputs here which we need to figure out you know our actual gains here so i'm inputting attack power i put in 2k um usually i think i'm at like 2.2 or something like that fully buffed with paladin buffs and all that consumes um but 2000 i think is a fairly round number uh, which is all right um I think this is average where I was in all these fights. And then I put in hit chance, which you should have six. Um, you can put in more than that, but uh, then your main and offhand weapon speeds. So I'm using Brutality Blade main hand, Flurry X off hand. So Brutality Blade has 2.5 speed, Flurry 1.5. 
that I put in the offhand DPS, which we need to calculate the average damage of an offhand hit with the attack power formula. Uh, then I put in the flurry up time, which you can get, if you look at a log here, you can go, so I believe I just inputted it from the gold neck fight in this raid. So you can go into your damage here, then you go to buffs, and you can see my flurry up time here is 93.23, so I put that in here. Then I took the pre-execute fight length in seconds. So the reason I'm not counting execute is during execute you would never queue Heroic Strike anyway, right? Um, because you wouldn't have any rage to do it. Because you do need rage to actually start queuing in Heroic Strike. You need the minimum amount of rage to cast Heroic Strike. Um, so during execute you're just spamming execute, which means that your rage is always getting spent and you never have any time to queue. So I just removed that uh, part of the fight entirely. Then I entered the amounts of heroic strikes and cleaves put together I have in this fight. So you can see in this fight I have 16 heroic strikes and 2 cleaves, so this actually should be 17. There you go. Uh, then I put the total execute damage, because we need, need to remove the execute damage from the total damage to get the numbers accurate here. So my total execute damage to this fight was uh, 6.5k, you can see that here. And then my total damage, if you look here, I had 42,000, for 9,200 for total damage. So those are the inputs. What we then do with these numbers here is we calculate, we took it, take in the flurry up time and calculate sort of the average development speed off of a sort of sort of averaged out flurry. So basically my flurry up time is 93.23%, right? And there's a 30% buff during those 93%. So I just took 93.23% uh, of 30% and just averaged it out over the entire fight. Um, so it gives a rough, roughly 28% damage or attack speed buffs. So I applied that to the weapon speeds. Um, then you calculate the damage without excuse, just to have that so we can get this. So then we calculate the average offhand hit uh, damage, which uh, here you can see the formula up here. Uh, so the, this uh, formula you can get by just Googling. It's on the wall wiki. Uh, it's fairly well known. Um, it's attack power divided by 14, etc., etc. So it's it's pretty easy. Um, it gives uh, 167 with 2k AP, which if you look at the logs, um, if you look at my logs here, it's actually fairly close. Uh, and obviously your AP does change mid-fight, so this is, again, it's not entirely accurate. You have, like, you know, Crusader procs, my Rage potions, it's stuff that changes your AP on the fly, which obviously changes your offhand hits. So again, this could be more, this could be less, but it's an average, so I think it's pretty decent. And then we get the average amount of main hand auto attacks and offhand auto attacks during the fight length. Um, so this is the way, this is the main thing that makes this calculation work, because you just take the uh, fight length and you divide it by the weapon speeds and that gives a decent estimate of how many swings you got so that's all these two are doing you can see the forms up here it's very simple so we can get we can sort of see how if this is close or not because we can add these together right so this is 82 combined or i guess roughly 83 um combined uh, auto attack swings and if you look at what i actually had which is 72 plus 16 because again we're counting in hope strike swings into these uh, estimated swings so because it's just time based, right? So these combined is what 88. Um, so you know it's not super far off. And then you just calculate how many percentage of the main and all that were heroic strikes. So in this fight we had 54% uptime on heroic strike, which is you know more than half the time we were curing heroic strike. And then uh, using these numbers, you can see that in this fight we had 14 swings uh, without heroic strike queued, which is 14 swings. Uh, where we could have queued a strike, and that's sort of the big thing. This is the window where we could have gained a gain from doing perfect ho strike canceling, right? So using this, we check out, we take the amount of time 14 ho strike hits would take, or main hand hits would take, and we look at how much, how many offhand hits we would be able to, of an average, fit in during that time. You can see that's what it's doing right here, and on average, that's 23 hits we can fit in during that time. And then we take the average hit uh, miss chance for an attack, which uh, is 24.8 minus your hit uh, with 3 or 5 weapon skill, which I'm assuming you have with this spreadsheet. So on average, uh, we would have missed about 4 of these hits. So 4 of these 23 hits that would miss, or would be able to miss, 4 of them missed, 4.4, 4.5 I guess. Um, so I don't really need to make the actual percentage calculation, you can always see. It, the only gain I would get this entire fight is four offhand hits that would hit four more hits of you know roughly 167 damage. So it's you can see from that it's really small. It's not big at all. So the potential damage gain from perfectly hero strike canceling this fight will be 737 more damage. Um, again, estimation. It's not. It's probably a bit more than this, but it, roughly this, and that's you know a 1.7 percent damage increase for perfectly heroic strike canceling whenever I possibly could. 
So you can see it's very tiny. And yes, it's not fully accurate. This I'm not counting in range gain. I'm not counting in, you know, whatever that would do to your rotation. So, but, but I mean, even if you double this, right, if it's 3.4% or whatever, that's still not really worth it in my opinion because the risk is so high. Um, and like, you just let your shit go through. Like, just, just play normally and just consider this as a sort of a passive like thing. And this is even... This is counting Gold Mag. I don't think I had Songflower for Gold Mag. Um, I believe it had dropped off at that point. I had, for sure, I'd only had a DMT buffs. But uh, if we look at a boss where I actually had all the uh, the bosses or uh, the buffs up, which is Magmador here, I had everything up. So uh, we can input Magmador here. So if you look at, let's just reset all of these. So my total damage on Magmador was 45k, and then we go. So my total execute damage was 4900. I should add a zero to this, because I forgot. All right, so amount of heroic strikes slash cleaves. I had no cleaves and 15 heroic strikes. Interesting point here is that I actually didn't... I See, my main damage source in this fight is heroic strike, because I just was able to Q it so often. And you can see, I didn't actually miss a single uh, bloodthirst this fight, so I didn't really mess up my rotation at all, right? Um, so I, the way you figure out if you missed a bloodthirst or not, by the way, uh, so I had eight casts here. So you just check... The cooldown for bloodthirst is six seconds, so you basically divide the fight length pre execute by six and that's the way you figure it out um because you're not casting blood thirst during execute anyway right so you remove that so we need to figure out how long the fight is without execute anyway which i believe is 51 seconds because they did check this before yep so execute starts at 51 seconds so we add that and if you want to check how many blood thirst we would have been able to fit in you just take 51 divided by six which i believe is 8.5 i also can't type there you go oh sorry i have to make an equal sign <laughs> This is... I'm really good at Excel. Holy shit, I can't type. There you go. So 8.5. So yes, I didn't miss a single bloodthirst this fight. Um, and it's obviously 8.5, so your first GCD every fight as a warrior should be Sundra Armor. So you're not always starting the fight off with immediately with bloodthirst. So again, you can't always fit in the exact number. But yes, I didn't actually manage to miss any of these. I just had so much rage that I could cast so many hero strikes that that's my main damage source this fight, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, so let's check flurry up time as well. I believe that's the last one. So I actually only had six... six no, I actually only had 76.97% flurry up time on this fight, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so let's enter that. 76.97%. There you go. So on this fight, you can see that even less here, right? 1.5%. Um, and this is fully world buffs and stuff. So it's, you know, it's, it's so tiny, right? Um, but yeah. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say with this video. Uh, pretty easy, but yeah. So basically, the Horrock Strike interaction or bug or feature is something that should affect your gearing and your understanding of why you don't want more hits past six and sort of help you understand crit cap and stuff. It affects our gearing a lot more than anything else. You shouldn't really, in my opinion, uh, apply it to your actual rotation. I will say, if you don't have world buffs, this percent gain, it goes up by quite a bit. Um, because obviously you have less hero strike up time without war buffs because your rage regen is going to be way less. But I would also say to that, just get war buffs. You're going to have a better time. It's not very, it's not that hard getting them. If you maybe you can just get them a day in advance if it's you know very crowded or whatever. Like song, Songflower is probably the toughest to get. But if you get it a day in advance, at least on our server, which is quite populated, it's fine. Um, but yes, warriors. I would always say get war buffs, even if you drop them. Um, if you're using consumables, you're still going to have a lot of reg regen and still going to have a lot of heroic strike up time. But yes, there's more of an argument to use it if you don't have those buffs. But even then, it's kind of sketchy because, again, extra tax makes hero strike cancelling really difficult. Um, perfectly, doing it perfectly. But yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to point out with this video. Um, Hopefully my napkin math here is okay. I'll just I'll click through all the boxes and you can see formulas up here Just so you can see I'm not doing anything sketchy with these numbers um, It's all very simple. You can pause the video and check these so that's that. Here's the flurry So yeah, you can see then we get the uh, the numbers here. So it's it's also I'm probably using way too many parentheses and shit in these <laughs> formulas. I'm bad at math. Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully I could persuade you not to heroic strike cancel mid raid because chances are it's just gonna mess you up. Just play normally and think of the heroic strike thing as a nice bonus and maybe. Um, don't forget to use Heroic Strike, because usually I see a lot of Warriors very scared to use Heroic Strikes, but if you get a good feel for your Rage Regen, you can use a lot of Heroic Strikes without, you know, hurting your uh, Bloodthirst or Wobins at all. Um, but yeah, so that's this video. I'll have more stuff up later. Um, thanks for checking it out.